Ladies and gentlemen, it is really, I'm really grateful for your attendance <laughs> after the long day, uh, conference day already. I warmly welcome you to the final panel, which will be devoted to a very extraordinary, important, I think, uh, topic coming to terms with the past reconciliation in the Western Balkans. Uh, my name is Johanna Daimel, and I have the privilege uh, to moderate this panel. I apologize for my voice, but I'm still after COVID. It's not smoking. <laughs> uh, I quit smoking two years ago, uh, actually, but uh, I'm, I'm still suffering for that. Please join me also to, to welcome uh, my panelists, uh, Natasha Kandic. I'm very grateful that she's here. Kustim Kolici, he's here, and Branka Vietra, uh, she is, joins us uh, online. Hello, Branka. And uh, last not least, we are waiting for Yasmin Hazic, uh, who is obviously on the way from the regional youth conference, and he is on the taxi, and he will jump on. Here he is. Okay, he's coming right in time. Welcome, Yasmin. So together we will uh, focus uh, on, on that topic, uh, which is very challenging. And uh, I would like to take the liberty to ask uh, first questions in the route, and then uh, I'm very happy for your comments and your questions uh, in the Q&A session because I know that there is a lot of extraordinary expertise in the room. Um, and then we, I hope that we can then shed a spotlights more. Uh, that's because we are entitled to be a spotlight panel. Uh, let me, before we start, uh, let me just remind you on the video message from uh, our foreign minister Baerbock today when she said that she appreciates uh, the work of activists who search for missing persons and promote reconciliation. And if we look at today, uh, we see that the war is back in Europe. The war is here with the Ukraine, with the war in the Ukraine. It is uh, very, very painful uh, for many in the Balkans to see what is happening there. I was listening this morning to uh, the radio break, uh, broadcast uh, Deutschlandfunk, and in this morning eh, there was a feature about Kosovo and Serbia and the impact of Ukraine. And it was the Kosovo writer, uh, Jeton Nerisai, who said, for us in Kosovo, the Ukraine war is a trauma. Um, the, Kosovo, the Ukraine war has changed a lot, also in southeastern Europe. And uh, R Russian uh, President Putin, he just had invented and brought up uh, the new foreign policy doctrine by saying uh, this is the Russian world. And we have now the Serbian world. Uh, we have the nationalist rhetoric back again. The war is visible, I think, in, in, in Serbia and in, in Kosovo. So we have young Russians who land in Serbia to escape uh, the mobilization. We have pro-Russian rallies that took place in Belgrade, who cheered the crowd, cheering Putin, and yes, was painted in the other side. On the other side, in Kosovo, Kosovo, Ukraine women are now trained by demining, imagine. I, in preparation for my moderation, I came across an article just on Friday in The Guardian, uh, where it's written, I quote, Serb ultranationalists have waited for Russia to enter into a decisive conflict with the Western Antichrist, to defeat godless Europe and the US, and to establish a different world order. They have placed their faith in Putin as a messiah and imagine him as an upgraded version of Slobodan Milosevic. So it must feel for many that the past is coming back to the present. Also, uh, Ms. Bebock today said that many of you, she said, experienced the horrors of war themselves. And she also said that reconciliation takes time. So today, even decades after the war and the end of the wars in Yugoslavia, we are still, we are still about coming to terms with the past. We are still talking about missing persons, about victims and violence, war criminals, remembering reconciliation and about justice. I agreed with my panelists to, for, for time-saving reasons that I don't want to introduce them in length. I think you know them. So Natasha Kandic, I'm very, very happy and very honored she's here in my panel. She is a very well-known international personality. 
extraordinary. She was nominated twice, I think, right so, for the Nobel Peace Prize in 18 and, uh, 2018 and 2021, founder of, of the Humanitarian Cent Law Center in Belgrade. Branka Vierda, she's joining us online. From, uh, she's program director of the Youth Initiative of, for Human Rights in Croatia. Uh, she's dealing a lot uh, with uh, uh, human rights uh, and uh, now with youth and youth training. I think this is a transitional justice that was I learned. Jasmin Hasic uh, from, from Bosnia. He's executive director of Humanity in Action uh, in Bosnia, Bosnia and Herzegovina Foundation, political scientist. Uh, is you doing a lot also with youth. That's why you come just now from the regional youth cooperation for this uh, summit, which is a purpose or coincidentally taking in parallel, which I think is a pity uh, that you are uh, now uh, discussing in parallel. And last but not least, Kjustin Kolici, who is a human rights activist, uh, theater and film director and producer, and he's also currently director of the Integral NGO based in Pristina, a human rights organization working on transitional justice and others. Before we start uh, in a round of discussion, and I put my questions to my panelists, we also have a, a short clip uh, from the Deutsche Welle, which we would li like to see now on reconciliation. Sound. Mislim da između običnog naroda nema tih tih nekih problema. Ova sve te nekako eskalacije. Što se radi po meni. Mislim da između običnog naroda nema tih tih nekih problema. Ova sve te nekako eskalacije što se radi po meni to je čisto čisto neko pranje para šta ja znam. Zavadi pa vlada i da se ostane na 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 pozicijama na funkciji to je to. Nikad nema pomerenja i neće ga biti dok je istok i zapad pravi što sad ovo što pravi. Pa mislim za nove generacije, mene i moje prijatelje, takva stvar ne igra veliku ulogu i da nesmetano se družimo, nije nam bitno ime, nacija. Sve najbolje želim svim narodom i želim da smo svi skupa i da se svi poštojimo i volimo i da se pomirimo. Niko nije, običan narodnik nije kriv ni zašto i ne suđujem nikoga. A pomirenje će doći ne nametnutim suživotom i nekim pritiskom i guranjem kako stranaca ili bilo koga drugog, ne komunikaciju među nama samima na nekom kulturnom, obrazovnom ili bilo kojim drugom nivou. Mislim da je to jedini, pravi i prirodan put. Nekako je previše prisutno, prisutan taj razdor između ljudi, pogotovo mladih ljudi i mislim da je nekako nemoguće, govorim generalno sad, nemoguće je doći do nekog generalnog pomirenja zato što se djeca uporno odgajaju u tom nekom duhu, da se razdvajaju jer ja dolazim iz grada gdje su pekare doslovno razdvojene. Mislim da je moja generacija, eto ja spadam već bliže 60. godinama, mislim da je moja generacija propustila tu priliku da u potpunosti od ove države, odnosno prostora, napravi funkcionalnu, sasvim normalnu državu. Nas tri smo, jedna muslimanka, jedna katolkinja i jedna pravoslavka. I za ko kaže da ne možemo zajedno, čitav smo život zajedno. Hvala vam veliko, Dojče Vele. Hvala vam da je to veliko pikča o situaciji, especially also on the young people. Uh, an issue and a topic that I would like also to address in our panel because they have different views on reconciliation and about how to deal with the past somehow. But let me start with my first question, uh, which is on a more pessimistic note. Um, Natasha, if I may ask you first, uh, in mid-September this year there was in Prague the CSO uh, representatives of the summit from the Western Balkans they stated in a very critical assessment of the situation that, I quote, overall, reconciliation has regressed. 
And you did more or less same, a very critical assessment of reconciliation in December last year uh, on the occasion of RICOM, where you said that there is a disrupted reconciliation. Are you still of that opinion or why did you come to that in five minutes? I know this is a challenge. Um. I will start as you with message of uh, uh, German Federal Minister. Uh, uh, she said, uh, reconciliation takes time. Uh, I understood that uh, she said similar, similar uh, like me, that uh, reconciliation is interrupted because we in the region, in post Yugoslav countries, uh, we had some good time. For, uh, some politicians who were ready to start uh, with, uh, you know, to make everything uh, to open space for reconciliation. It was uh, in time when the president of Croatia was the professor Ivo Josipovic. He was, uh, you know, leader in regional reconciliation. He was. Um, uh, uh, all of us from the reg uh, regional civil society, we like him very much because uh, he understood how it's important to clarify the fate of uh, all people um, to try to <clears throat> discover all mass graves and to start, you know, with uh, reconciliation, to uh, debate about what's happened and how to achieve the reconciliation and trust in institution. It was a very good time. Uh, in Serbia, uh, also, we had one uh, not good time, but uh, one very good uh, moment. When Humanitarian Law Center discovered uh, a video tape with the Serbian police unit, Scorpions, about the killing, execution of six Muslims in uh, Srebrenica, Ordinary people, citizens, uh, were the first time on the side of justice and victims. They saw the face, they listened the names of uh, victims, they saw the face of perpetrators. And it was the good, uh, good moment in Serbia, you know, to see ordinary people, uh, you know, to say, we want to justice, we support the victim, we want to see uh, perpetrators in the court. You know, other people who, uh, who, were, uh, su uh, who supported uh, war criminals, they were uh, very quiet at that time. But that time is uh, lost. Now, we are very far from reconciliation. It's not only interrupted, disrupted. It's, uh, we don't have politicians who are ready, you know, to uh, deal with uh, reconciliation. Uh, also, European Union and members of European uh, Union uh, states, they are not innocent, you know. Uh, we listened many years that reconciliation is our issue, that nobody from outside uh, could, uh, you know, interfere to uh, give some lessons how to achieve reconciliation. Uh, but we as civil society managed to establish a regional network, you know, to strongly advocate to, for a list of all victims, to know the names, to, uh, to create a framework for reconciliation, you know, to, uh, to know what's happened to all victims, because without names, how to restore personal dignity of uh, killed and missing persons? And our effort was uh, very strong. Uh, we started in, in 2006, but without, uh, without understanding of European institution and members of Europe, uh, European, uh, member states of European Union, you know, uh, in the end, <clears throat> in 2019, 19, uh, we left alone, without any political uh, uh, will, in the region, in post Yugoslav uh, countries, we saw that you know, uh, uh, European Union divided reconciliation for Western Balkans, without Croatia, without Slovenia, and you know, but we as a regional society, we continue to work together. But it's very difficult, uh, you know, to, uh, to deal, to fight for, um, uh, 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 for uh, 
you know, for really de uh, dealing with pass, with uh, uh, reliable, with um, responsible uh, politicians uh, for reconciliation, if we don't uh, have uh, expert support, if we don't have, you know, some some kind of mechanism who will uh, who will be focused on uh, uh, local uh, governments in the region and you know uh, to convince them with some financial or with some operational or with some political uh, pressure that uh, issue that uh, res uh, responsibility of the all post yugoslav country is you know to deal with a legacy of the wars we have 130,000 uh, killed people. And it is our leg a legacy, horrible uh, a legacy, without names, only numbers. And what is important to say that we need, uh, uh, need to create some conditions for, uh, for reconciliation. Priority is to name the victims, uh, to know uh, the fate of uh, missing persons, but you know, to uh, to advocate on for partnerships uh, between uh, civil society organization and uh, uh, local governments uh, is uh, a lost uh, approach. We need uh, uh, more energy for European institution, for think tank organization, for academic institution, you know, to finish what is important. For example, all of you know that ICTY uh, dealt with uh, victims of war crimes. They clarified the fate of about 8,000 of victims of war crimes. Local uh, judiciary, local courts established identity maybe between two and 3,000 victims. And we, as coalition of RECOM, we managed to document all victims in the, uh, in the war in Kosovo, and uh, maybe about uh, 8,000 of victims killed or disappeared in the war in Croatia. It means that uh, uh, um, we could um, continue, but without any uh, really strong uh, impact from uh, uh, European institution, it's very difficult to think about reconciliation, not achieve, to think about that the reconciliation is possible. Thank you, Natasha. I think uh, uh, we could, we could uh, go more uh, for hours uh, to discuss it, and it's really worth, and uh, I think the complaint uh, that there's not enough uh, support from European Union, from European institution, is something that we, again, should underline in the recommendations. And one of the problems, uh, I think, uh, is, and we know, is that part, part of the problem is that Croatia is a member of the European Union and Slovenia is a member of the European Union. So, Branka, it's to, up to you. Just let me know why it, does it make it so specific with Croatia uh, from, from a domestic perspective, but let's say also from your perspective of your organization. Are you, despite of that, cooperating, as Natasha said, or where are your challenges? And you have also five minutes for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Thank you, Johanna. At the moment, I'm in Kosovo and I really apologize that I couldn't be with you uh, physically. I will uh, try to be very concrete in my, uh, in my answers. So regarding the current situation in Croatia, so basically I will follow up on what uh, uh, Ms. Kandic said, is that the fact that Croatia's membership uh, in the EU actually separated it from the Western Balkans region, given that the neighboring countries are not yet members, and that the fact that reconciliation and mutual accountability is only possible if the region as a whole is included. Croatia, unfortunately, has not used almost 10 years of uh, membership to address the importance of regional reconciliation and cooperation as a priority agenda of the European Union policies. Uh, I would also stress that European Union can do much more in order to recognize the values of peace building and reconciliation and, the deal, and to deal with the issues of criminal, reparative and restorative justice in the period and after the countries assess the European Union, not only in the pre-accession period. 
As for the current challenges regarding transitional justice implementation in Croatia, in the context of regional reconciliation, I would stress just the following. The cooperation of the public prosecutor's offices um, in the prosecution of war crimes is at low level. At the level of symbolic reparations, official commemorations and memory politics are oriented towards the victims of the creation entity almost exclusively. The positive development in memory politics in Croatia took place in 2020 on the occasion of the anniversary of the Operation Storm, but in unfortunately did not become a systematic practice, but an exception that was not continued. Also, in history lectures, in the formal education, historical events that took place during the 1990s are not taught in a non-biased narrative. A positive change is the legal framework in the context of Croatia. It's the new law on civilian victims, called Law on Civilian uh, Homeland War Victims, which came into force in July last year. But it remains to be seen whether it will be applied universally and on the principles of equality, and whether the victims will use the opportunity to gain the status and rights. That would be all for the beginning. Thank you. Thank you, Branka. Uh, also to address uh, the memory politics, which are very important, education and textbooks. Uh, this is also a very important issue so to bring together and uh, not segregation. Uh, that brings me to you, uh, Yasmin, because you are dealing in Bosnia uh, with youth. Uh, you're just coming from the youth forum. Uh, that was something I really missed uh, in the recommendations uh, from, 2000 and, uh, from 21. Uh, there was not one single sentence on, uh, the, on the importance to deal with youth. Uh, so uh, I'm eager to learn more about your uh, organization because you are specifically focusing on the youth in Bosnia and uh, just give us an insight what are you which issues are you dealing with and and, and what is what is your success or failure if you may so <laughs> a little bit of promo time yeah <laughs> sorry for, okay. for being late uh, a cab picked up somebody else so i had to wait for another one and then it was a long day what a what a agenda and schedule and uh, it was the same with with the RICO conference just a couple of blocks away uh, they usually say the, the lectures are from 9 to 5, and then happy hour starts at 5 to 7, and then past 7 it's usually psych therapy, so I don't, I don't want to turn this into a psych therapy. I want us to be still a little bit focused on the topics, uh, and they are serious and they're important. Humanity in Action, eight offices around the world. There's one in Kolwitzstrasse here in, in, in Berlin, so we have an international uh, cohort of uh, extremely dedicated young people who are working with youth to empower them in various different uh, fields, but mostly in uh, democratic transitions and politics of memory, and uh, you, you have it, it's all contextualized to the countries where we operate in. So this is very short response to your, to your question. Oh, that was quick. Thank you. <laughs> that was really quick. So, uh, but but uh, I, I address you as a political scientist, this also something. Uh, I remember that there was an open letter from European parliamentarians last year uh, to address to uh, the then uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel, where they said we need something positive looking forward. We need some sort of a positive piece. Uh, is it also some a concept? Uh, in also, the inclusion of women, I think, uh, in, in, in reconciliation in your in your program, is it something that you are thinking of and uh, you are dealing with? Indeed, what we try to do, and this is a, a topic that is reoccurring in all our programs, is to build a, a democratic resilience which is one of the, the key components which we feel is lacking, especially in the Bosnian society. Uh, why is it so? Because uh, there are many ways of looking at how our state immune system has been built up over last 27, 25, depending on uh, years, depending on uh, when, when do you start the, the, the new count, post-era, post-Dayton era, before the war, after the war, and so on and so forth. What is democratic resilience in this context? It is um, actually uh, the basic sort of adaptive capacity of individuals and communities, especially to, to appreciate the opportunities, but also to manage the risks in a peaceful way. So that's the, that's the basic line. Uh, what do we do? We struggle with how design of institution is conceptualized. 
So we try to feel whether there is political will to change the status quo that we lived for the past 25 years, and how do we do it, and how do we cooperate with the elites where we can cooperate, how do we counter what the elites have to say where we can do it. Um, another issue is to cooperate with external um, factors, the EU, German government, you name it, everybody who's willing and interested up to a certain point to uh, transfer the knowledge, transfer the certain um, know-hows into how the society could be transformed. And then the final one is to build up the local ownership, which is something that we miss, something that um, local um, locals are not aware that at one point of their transformational voyage that they started in XYZ year, they need to take guns and start shooting democracy mm -hmm. instead of shooting each other. And this is, this is one of the reasons why we, uh, we're not progressing as such. Uh, another issue that we're looking at is the actual um, social trust mm -hmm. issue. Uh, many of, of the social trust components in our country are still non-accountable. They are artificial, they're technocratic, bureaucratic, you name it. And all of these issues are, are running in parallel. They're overlapping as well. However, uh, we need a new social contract. We need to establish ourselves as the pivotal changes and agents within the very, very crude societal structure. And then the third one, we actually uh, go and explore the limits and scope of our uh, government's legitimacy. We want to hold them accountable for poor performances, for corruption, for any number of, 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 of things that they have delayed over years and that should have been delivered to us, but they aren't. And this is why people are leaving. This is why transitional justice issues are not being resolved in an adequate way and so on and so forth. So in a very nutshell, um, social resilience, building the immunity, which is very important. Somehow we get sick all the time, the virus is in, uh, but Bosnian society, uh, in general is getting sick by the same disease all over again because we haven't built this resilience. So, and I guess that the, those uh, young leaders, they are applying for, for being part of that networking. That, that's a sort of selection or out. We, we can talk later on. Yeah, well, exactly. Okay, because now I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we have Christian uh, here. Uh, you have a double header, as I said. So you, you are film and theater director and on the other hand, Integra. Uh, director NGO. Uh, some days ago, uh, again, the writer Jeton Nezirai, uh, the play Father and Father, which was directed by you, um, was presented again at the Ethnological Museum in, in Kosovo. And this is about the pain of missing, uh, f families of missing people. So this is a, one of those topics that you both dealing in your cultural, in your art work, as well as in Integra. You, you do a lot of dealing with the past, dealing with missing persons in various uh, manners and, 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 uh, and spheres. So you address it in cultural way and you address it in Integra. So I'm very curious to hear your experience. What are you doing? How are you doing? What have been, has been your m m main uh, impression and, and, and successes or, or backlashes the last year? Yeah, <clears throat> basically, uh, we are engaged for long, long time now. Is it, is it, is it on? Function? Good? Yeah, yes. Okay. So basically, we are for a long period now engaged in the field of transitional justice and dealing with the past, but maybe I can be focused on recent things which are yes. quite important to be mentioned because we, we've been working on grassroots level, policy level, working with the victims groups a lot, um, working on documentation, oral history, uh, education, whatever. But now, uh, when it comes to transitional justice and dealing with the past, <clears throat> we are focused on two big projects. And one of them, which is very important for Kosovo, I think, is development of national strategy for transitional justice, which is, Tegra is very much involved. Of course, government of Kosovo was not ready to develop this strategy. And we, the local civil society, we have used all our power and network and to impose and uh, kind of to pressure uh, Kosovo government to put uh, the national strategy on its plan. And now we are under the process of developing. So this is a quite 
let's say, positive step in that jungle of a uh, lot of problems on dealing with the legacies of the war. Uh, of course, we are in the process of developing it. We have to see uh, what will be the final products, uh, because uh, always we are afraid that uh, political establishments, not only in Kosovo, but in the entire the region, uh, they can surprise us in the end. Uh, so this is a journey, um, this ongoing journey. Uh, another thing that Integra is doing uh, for a while now, uh, we are trying to document the, um, the old massacres that have, hap that have happened in Kosovo. So Integra has engaged uh, a very uh, known uh, expert in Kosovo, Shrizen Goshi, uh, and the entire Integra team is working now for the third year and very soon we're going to publish uh, a book and then a web page with all massacres. So the idea is that to publish something which is evidence-based, is research-based, is credible. And uh, for that regard, I think that we're going to contribute a lot uh, on the process of dealing with the past. Because as we know, Kosovo do lacks data, huh? do lacks validated data, because AGLC and some other organizations have contributed a lot when it comes to documentation of civil victims of the war. But uh, Kosovo as a country, do lacks validated data, which are um, kind of evidence-based and they are kind of presented in uh, different education uh, books or curriculas and et cetera, et cetera. So these, uh, these are two, one of kind of main two initiatives which Integra is very much involved now. And I think that if we succeed how we are planning, it's going to be a positive progress. Huh? Um, and when it comes to the arts, and, and, and dealing with the past, yeah, uh, my, my last uh, theater play, uh, which was commissioned by Integra um, and written by Tony Zirai, was kind of focused on the faith of a, a family of missing person. Um, and from the moment that we have started to produce this, this, this play, uh, we decided to do this in a very non-mainstream setup. So not in typical theater, but we have uh, decided to uh, use a, a small room of ethnological museum in Pristina. Um, and we have treated a story of a, mal of a family uh, which uh, is not accepting the reality that one of the, their beloved one is missing. Um, and I think that um, now we have done a lot of references and uh, the audience is really attracted by the show. And I think that we have used this tool by engaging professional artists and tackling the issues of related to dealing with the past which is quite rare, frankly speaking, uh, not only in Kosovo, but in the entire region, because we have discussed a bit via emails mm -hmm. that, yeah, artists are known as the leaders of kind of more progressive leaders towards the peace and reconciliation. But frankly speaking, that's not the true story in the Balkans. Uh, there are very few artists who genuinely are engaged on topics which are sensitive and are going against the narrative fueled uh, by political establishments. Uh, but uh, because they are quite afraid and, let's say, controlled by these political elites to be openly um, working on, on, on kind of using their art for dealing with the past. And this case is in Kosovo, in Serbia, and Croatia, everywhere. You, know, you, you, you can even see artists who are uh, doing pieces which are um, totally based on dogma, uh, totally, totally based on propaganda, which kind of are financed and boosted by political establishments. And that's pity. That's very pity. Uh, another element to conclude, which is very important for me to mention here, is that um, unfortunately there are some communities, not only in Kosovo, but in the entire region, that were not so much included in the process of dealing with the past, even in the civil society level. Uh, I'm talking about uh, Roma people, which uh, they've been, uh, let's say, discriminated uh, purposely or not purposely, even by civil society stakeholders. Uh, and Integra in the last uh, two, three years, even though in our activities we tried to engage them, and, but it was never enough. In the last couple of years, uh, we are trying to uh, impose this need that the Roma people need to be uh, included in the process of dealing with the past, not uh, just as a decorative element for the sake of uh, international um, pressure, but for the sake of the need of our societies. Yeah, 10 minutes, okay. I'm concluding. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see 10 minutes. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I, I think it's also important that you, you remember that the places of commemoration are very important. Uh, and I remember that I came across uh, one, one uh, woman from Bosnia where she said, 
the missing people as one of those who were missing, and then they found out it was a place where hydropower plants uh, shall be shall be built uh, on mass graves and so forth. Uh, also, the the issue of inclusiveness. And allow me a final point before then I open for a short Q and A session. Uh, on arts, uh, because uh, art can can also do harm. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, the graffitis uh, are maybe in positive sense, but also in the negative sense. We have uh, seen the Ratkom Mladic is yeah. very famous for that. And I, but on the other side, also to pay that to get international attention, uh, it was very, very important also to have this the, the movies uh, hive now. Uh, in a broader international audience, also in the regional context, the same as Kovadis Aida, of course. So uh, I think culture can do a lot, and the European Commission uh, knows that and has launched now 13 projects uh, in, in, in culture. And I really missed it in the recommendations of, uh, for, for reconciliation, that uh, arts and culture can be a driver for, for, for reconciliation and for coming together. That's why I wanted to address it here. But I open now the floor for some questions, uh, we have 10 minutes left, if you are not too exhausted. <laughs> is there? Okay, take the floor. Uh, I have, uh, no, here's the mic, is coming. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to add something to what Kushrim was already saying, uh, the situation of the Roma. When we uh, look into Kosovo, Kosovo is still in a process of nation building. And the Roma are excluded from this process. So to deal with dealing with the past reconciliation when it comes to Roma, it's not only about the individual fate of persons, it's about the whole community. Mm -hmm. 100,000 Roma were expelled from Kosovo. This is not a topic in Kosovo. The Roma are seen as collaborators of the Serbs. And this is how they are determined. And the Kosovo society will never be an integral society if they do not accept the Roma as a part. We can also talk about Bosnia. In Bosnia, who talks in Bosnia about the situation of the Roma? We saw it with the Deutsche Welle piece. It was about the Bosniaks, the Croats, and the Serbs. There are Roma in Bosnia. There are Roma in Bosnia who were fighting in the army. There were Roma in Bosnia who were expelled. Ethnic cleansing included the Roma starting in Bielina. You go down to Svornik, you go to Banja Luka, everywhere the Roma, the Muslim Roma were expelled. Nobody talks about Who in the Bosnian society knows about the Scottish massacre? Nobody. Who talks about that among the victims in Srebrenica there were so many Roma? The memorial center in Srebrenica does it. The public in Bosnia does not do it. And you will not achieve a reconciliation if you leave out a group. This refers to civil society, and this refers to the politics, and it refers to Europe and to all of us. As long as we do not do this, Reconciliation remains on paper. Thank you. Thank you. I, uh, just short, uh, very short. Yeah, sure, okay. Of course, because I just wanted to, to mention a case in Kosovo, in, in Mitrovica, there was a massacre, and um, whatever, the community there built a, a memorial, a very kind of simple one, and they excluded a Roma girl in the list because there was a, a killed Roma in that group. And then a, a kind of small circle of civil society, including myself, we have reacted kind of heavily and we have imposed and, uh, and then after two or three months they changed the placard and they put the Roma girl there. So basically they were discriminated even when they did a memorial and there was evidence that a Roma girl was killed in that massacre. Just to Thank you, thank you for that. Maybe to add. Uh, yeah, okay. Relating to Rome, you know, um, Humanitarian Law Center and the Humanitarian Law Center Kosovo, uh, uh, we conduct uh, field research uh, relating all victims, but it's too difficult to co collect uh, evidence, uh, information about the Roma, what's happened with Roma in Kosovo, because uh, um, uh, Kosovo is empty. Uh, some uh, Romas uh, behind Podujevo region is uh, there, but other Romas, they were expelled. Problem is that uh, <clears throat> they don't have uh, uh, organization <coughs> dealing with uh, uh, two documents what's happened with, uh, uh, with the past. For example, I can't stop to think on uh, one case. Uh, a researcher a few days ago visited one uh, refugee camp in Montenegro called Konik uh, to try to find one uh, a family, one uh, brother and sister who um, helped some uh, Roma children uh, uh, who left without the parents. Um, father was killed by Kosovo Liberation Army. 
And you know, it was June in 99 when children uh, uh, with other um, Romans uh, um, left uh, uh, Jakob and paid to, uh, uh, trying to reach Montenegro. Uh, alone, the children and uh, on brother um, Zechiri uh, Gezim and his uh, Fiat uh, sister, they took uh, on the road the children and uh, went with them to Konik, Montenegro, Podgorica city. And the researcher 10 days ago visited, uh, uh, trying to find the children. And um, uh, they contacted, they uh, uh, managed to find uh, uh, Afieta Zeciri. Uh, she was with the children. Her brother was uh, uh, died. She's a poor uh, woman with uh, uh, three children. Children are uh, with many psychological and psych uh, uh, mental problems. And she's not supported. She, uh, she uh, doesn't have money. Uh, for the children, but she's alone with children. Nobody pay attention to that. And for example, I asked her about the father, no, no me, uh, um, I asked a researcher, and the researcher asked uh, a woman, what is, uh, what's happened to it, the uh, um, mortal remains of the father? And she said, I don't know. I met the children uh, on the road. Uh, I heard that the name of father is Byram, uh, but he's killed, uh, but uh, uh, somebody from Kosovo visited her asking for permission to uh, bury uh, Byram in Kosovo. And we checked after that, his mortal remains mm -hmm. are somewhere in the hospital. Mm -hmm. or in more, yeah. Horrible. There are no memory about the victim, about the Roma victims. If, you, if we ask in the village about Roma who uh, lived there, uh, before the war, nobody remember. I think that this is very important. Yeah. If it's, there's one question left out here. Uh, would you like to? A very, very short, so because, uh, okay. Uh, here. okay. Thank you very much. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I will phrase this question uh, quite good, but I want, to, I want to speak about institutional victimization. You know, I, I heard a lot about victims, but from my perspective, where I sit, you know, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, I come from Bosnia and Herzegovina, Alex Mohovic, Center for Policy and Governance. Uh, every member of our society has someone uh, died, killed, or missing uh, during the war. Uh, so, even me personally. So, uh, what I see from my perspective is that there is, uh, uh, victimization is institutionalized. I see Serb nationalists, they never speak about, about anything else but their own victim, yeah. you know, and how the Serbs are victim of something, of something else. If we see historically where the biggest crime, war crimes in, in Bosnia happened, it's also where Serbs were actually killed during the Second World War by, by Ustasha regime, you know, and, 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 and independent Croatia, uh, the collaborator of, of, of Nazis. So, you know, uh, in, my, in my ethnic group as well, I'm, I'm Bosniak, Muslim, you know, I see this institutionalized uh, victimization as well. Uh, when, when conflict in Ukraine happened, you know, you could, you could actually see all over the, the, the social media, you know, this discourse of, of victim. Yeah, look, look at the European Union, how they, how they act now. When the war in Bosnia started, I don't know if, you, if you're aware, there was an a, a embargo on imports of, of weapons. So basically what people are saying now is, yeah, they tied our hands, you know, and now they're helping, they're, they're helping Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. they, they basically contribute that to the fact that Ukrainians are Christians and, and Bosniaks were Muslims. So how can we actually fight that discourse of institutional victimization, especially when we have, you know, on, on this side of, of victims in the last war, the fact that Croatian and Serbian governments are actually, you know, celebrating war criminals and the, the time of, 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 you know, politicians that had will to, to face, face the, the truth has passed. Mm -hmm. 
I think this is a very, very important uh, topic that you're raising, though, this victimization from one side to the other. So war criminals, you're war criminals, and I'm a I'm victim. And then uh, related to ethnicity, related to the national history. So it comes again to education. It comes again to textbooks. It comes again to the role of the media, uh, who play a crucial role uh, to be against hate speech and so, and so forth. I was signaled that we have only two minutes. Now, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I would love to, to really uh, talk more about uh, this, this very, very important important uh, issue, but uh, I think we all deserve also the dinner, and you are exhausted as well. Uh, I, but I would like uh, to give Branka uh, a chance to speak up again for one minute or two minutes, because she was so short, uh, and, and uh, I would like, I don't want, if, if she wants to take the floor. Do you want to add something? And my final, my final question would be, uh, if you can say, what will be the, the, the future of uh, RECOM? because uh, the RECOM network is something that was established especially for that uh, reconciliation, and uh, it's uh, uh, some sort in troubles. So uh, how can we support it from the European Union side, from the international side? But, but Branka, in short, two sentences, if you want to. Regarding uh, RECOM, I think uh, Ms. Kandic can yeah. tell okay. more details. Okay. I will just share one sentence, okay. and it kind of maybe reflects uh, the part of the answer uh, in the okay. whole discussion. I would just stress that I believe that the way on how state uh, treats uh, civilian victims of the war, especially those who are members of minority communities, reflects how the state creates its own identity and determines on which principles it wants to grow. Well, that's a very important uh, statement. I think also in, in the light of uh, the agreement now, I may add so in a nutshell also between Bulgaria and North Macedonia, so, so because if, if it's historic and identity questions become uh, a part of uh, the negotiation framework, uh, that is a new, new phase and a new stage. Natasha. But uh, uh, Branka is in charge for uh, 15 uh, Forum for Transitional Justice organized by Recom Reconciliation Network. Branka Vierda from Youth Initiative and Western Tertiolic from uh, Documenta. And uh, it will be in uh, Croatia, in Zagreb, uh, to demonstrate that uh, Croatia uh, is part of... Uh, post yugoslav uh, uh, territory, that uh, we need to work together, that uh, our legacy uh, is joint, and we should uh, continue together to, uh, you know, to, uh, to doing something relating uh, 130,000 victims. Our uh, approach is uh, victims-centered uh, approach. This is very important, victim-oriented. And Branka, Go to Croatia to prepare. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Would you like to add a sentence? Yeah, actually, j j just to point something. Uh, sure. In the Integra, with Youth Initiative for Human Rights in Belgrade, we do also Milita Dobrodan Festival. And basically, unfortunately, also because of the lack of readiness to support these types of events, uh, Mira Dobrodan Festival became the only small window of communication between societies because our events are very public and of course our events has a, have a huge opposition like protests and everything and so sometimes the international community are seeing these types of projects and collaboration as a problematic one as bringing like a attention and the last thing you're right because there is a tentative always I'm accused even in, in Kosovo from my Albanian kind of friends that you're trying to balance the victims there is not uh, kind of the, that that's not the point the victim is the victim and the victim needs to be recognized Respective. yes one sentence uh, if you'd like to yes uh, sorry one one very simple one i think we need to in response to your question but in general to abandon this paradigm of securitization as a governance model and we should not fall into the trap all over again because I feel that this is what political elites wants, want us to do all over, uh, and, and this is not going to work in the long run. So, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I don't dare to wrap up. I don't dare to summarize. I thank you very much for your attendance. I thank you for your questions. Uh, and we all deserve now the networking dinner. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.